This is an ABC News special. The 92 vote. Tonight, the Super Tuesday primaries. Reporting from ABC News Election Headquarters, David Brinkley and Peter Jennings. Good evening and welcome to our review of Super Tuesday. Nice to have David Brinkley with us as always this evening. The headlines this evening are big night for Governor Clinton in the South, good night for Paul Songus in his home state, Massachusetts, and also in neighboring Rhode Island, big night for President Bush across the board, but persistent dissatisfaction with the president from an uncomfortable percentage of the voters, and Pat Buchanan stays under the president's skin. The other renegade Republican, David Duke of Louisiana, amounts to very little with voters anywhere. We will spend the hour digesting much of this. We'll talk to Governor Clinton, former Senator Songus, Vice President Quayle and our own team of political reporters. As always, we're delighted to have you here, David. Delighted to be here. Super Tuesday was designed by the Democrats to produce, if possible, a southern moderate presidential candidate who could win. What are your first impressions based on what you see today? Well, they have chosen a southern moderate Democrat who could win but has not yet won and may do so before it's all done. There is, however, as you say, a persistent and lingering dissatisfaction in the electorate. Numerous people, uncounted people, have said to the exit poll takers, I wish I could have voted for somebody else. So my suggestion is that somebody have his name changed to John R. None of the above, put it on a ballot, and he'll get elected. You remind me a little bit of Senator <laughs> Kerry of Nebraska, who, when he dropped out, said he thought he might have done better if he'd run as uncommitted than if he'd run as Bob Kerry. But there is real anger there, isn't there? It seems so, yes. Okay, let's take a look at the boards, uh, as we call them. Let's take a look at how the vote has broken down this evening. First of all, let's take a look at how the Democrats done. These are the states, that's Clinton in red. These are the states that Clinton won tonight. Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana, Tennessee, Mississippi, and Florida. We'll come back to Florida. That was the most contested one, but everywhere else, Governor Clinton has had a very convincing win. In fact, our polling unit is quite happy to characterize it as a landslide. And this is what's happened to Paul Songus tonight. He has won in Massachusetts, as expected. It's his home state, and he has done well in neighboring Rhode Island. Governor Clinton and Jerry Brown sawed off a bit for number two in Rhode Island. Uh, Governor Brown, former Governor Brown of California, has not won any states tonight, and it was not expected that he would. Here's what it looks on the Republican side. All right, let's take a floor look at Florida first. Um, this is with about 70% of the precincts reporting. Bill Clinton doing, David, much better than the polls suggested. I think the polls, as I recall, yesterday and the day before were showing about 10 percent, and here they show really quite a jump up for Clinton. They're wrong again. That's all. And you dismiss them so easily all the time. You drive pollsters <laughs> crazy. Let's go to delegates on the when go delegates on the Democratic side. First of all, this is all about uh, gaining de delegates uh, to the convention this summer. 2,145 are needed. These are those won this evening. 438 for Clinton. This is the Super Tuesday picture of the South, as you can see, 182 for Songus uh, up there in Massachusetts and Rhode Island, and 28 for Governor Brown. You get some delegates. You don't, there's not a winner-take-all situation for everywhere. And this is what it looks overall as of now, those won before this evening, those won tonight, and the total in the right-hand column there. And you can see how commanding a lead Bill Clinton has at this point over former Senator Songus. I'm reminded, David, of what he said. I think it was coming out of New Hampshire. There'll be no miracles, but steady progress. And however he is judged as a human being as the evening goes on and as the campaign goes on, he is making this steady, steady climb in the delicate count. And it's working fine. It's working out for him. And there are already people around, I'm not including us, people around who are predicting that the uh, ticket this fall will be Bush and Clinton. Okay. 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 So let's have a look at the Republican <laughs> side of things. Here's what it looks like on the Republican side. As we said, a very clean sweep for the president this evening. Eight states, president wins them all, and he wins them all pretty convincingly, uh, though he gets pressed in Massachusetts by Pat Buchanan, and he got pressed a little bit in Florida by Pat Buchanan. But Pat Buchanan did not do as well here as he did in New Hampshire, and he has won no states this evening. Take a look at Massachusetts. 65% of the vote for the president so far, but look down there in the left-hand corner, only 32% of the precincts reporting. Pat Buchanan has 29% of the vote. That's down from New Hampshire. You may recall that in New Hampshire, he had 37% of the vote in New Hampshire. He's down to 29 in New Hampshire. But that same economic dissatisfaction, uh, that same dissatisfaction with the president's leadership and perhaps even with his campaigning, we'll talk about that. There's the popular vote overall. George Bush, 69%, Pat Buchanan, 28%, as we said, 
David Duke, much of whose argument has been co-opted to some extent by Pat Buchanan, is not showing anywhere except actually, David, in the state of Mississippi. Governor Clinton's going to show up in just a second at a hotel in Chicago, and we'll be very keen to hear uh, what he has to say. But before he does, what do the voters think of Clinton? As they left the polls today, here's the person who watches that more carefully than anybody else for us, Lynn Shirley. Peter, what worked for Bill Clinton in the South today is his home address. He is the local boy who's made good, and Democratic voters there seemed eager to endorse their native son. According to our exit polls, Clinton won very strongly among those born in the South, and they were half the electorate. Contrast that to his slimmer victory margin among Southern newcomers, those who moved to the area within the last decade. Governor Clinton's appeal to his neighbors was based mainly on personal qualities. Across the South, one of the most important reasons Democratic voters cited for choosing a candidate was, he cares for people like me. Of them, 70% voted for Bill Clinton, only 15% for Songus, 11% for Jerry Brown. Of those who cared that the candidate best represents my party, Clinton won even bigger, 75%. As for specific issues, Clinton came out ahead on the number one concern, the economy. He won among blacks, among lower income voters, moderates. In Florida, he even did well among Jewish voters. And look at the voters in Florida who are 60 and older, nearly half the Democratic voters. Clinton won their support 56%. But Bill Clinton has still not eliminated the so-called character issue. About one-fourth of all Democrats in the South told us they have doubts about his integrity. Peter? Okay, Lynn, thanks very much. Come back a little later in this evening to talk about the character issue and perhaps go over that, uh, that uh, demographic survey of the Clinton vote again. But uh, here's the governor uh, at his headquarters in Chicago. We're going to talk about Super Tuesday for the most part throughout this hour, but the candidates have moved on. Michigan and Illinois coming up uh, in the next week. And there is Governor Clinton in Illinois, the sort of perfect state, if you're looking for a perfect state in the country these days, where he and Songus will go head-to-head, -head, a state that much represents all of the various strains in the American electorate. ABC's Koki Roberts is with the governor out there in Chicago. Koki, uh, I can see that he looks happy, but what's the buzz among the campaign professionals? The campaign is extremely excited about the, the results tonight. They say it is much better than they expected, particularly in Florida. And they are hoping that what this means is that when the so-called superdelegates, the elected officials, meet on Friday in Washington, that Clinton will get a great big boost out of this, pick up even more delegates before the Illinois primary next Tuesday. Koki, while we're watching Hillary Clinton introduce her husband, have you got a quick thought about what you've been seeing out of the South today? You're a Southerner. <laughs> It's been very interesting to see the South. Uh, Lynn talked earlier about the difference between those who say they're born in the South and have moved there recently. It does show that the South remains a different region of the country. It's not just like every place else, and it does respond to a candidate who seems to be more liberal on economic issues, but more conservative on social issues. Just the opposite of the message that Paul Songus has been sending. Koki, thank you. Clinton has been thinking and saying all along that Illinois would be the deciding state for him and for whoever else is still in the race. The big state, many delegates, it is an almost perfect cross-section of the American electorate. It's difficult to be elected president and not carry Illinois. If he does well there next week, he will believe he's over the hump and on his way to winning. By a press person, why are you doing you know, it? At that point, David, I think would why begin to become a mathematical impossibility right. to stop him. Very nearly. Um, but Paul Saunders, who's made the point throughout the last week or so that he's got the message and Saunders has the machine, is going to run into very serious difficulty if he has no more than a message in Illinois, I would think. Well, you know what they want to hear in Illinois. When do we get our jobs back? As they want as, here in as, Michigan. As in Michigan on the same day. And when do we go back to work? For one more year and watch what is happening to it. If we can turn uh, Mrs. Clinton down for just a second, we'll listen to Koki Roberts again on the subject of the South. Koki, um, haven't, you've had a chance to look at some of the exit polls in terms of how women responded to Governor well, Clinton and former Senator Songus today. What did you find? Well, women don't seem to be very different on these two candidates. Uh, they, they have been... Uh, 
uh, able to sort out the character questions about Governor Clinton, and although they are not as much for him as men are, the differences are not that great. Uh, where we're really seeing tremendous differences among women is in the Republican side, where uh, women have just simply not been showing up at the polls. As you can see, um, Governor Clinton and his wife are now giving a big hug, and um, we're about to hear from Bill Clinton, so it's a little hard to hear from me at the moment. Okay, Cokie, thank you very much. Um, this is kind of a reception that he is more than delighted to see telecast uh, across the country. Thank and this is much. the most sophisticated campaign machinery I they organized, this acceptance speech or this victory tonight, speech to be right in prime time, the way it is. Why they call this Super Tuesday. <laughs> From Florida to Texas and all states in between, people open their hearts to Hillary and to me but for something much bigger than just another campaign. Tonight, the people are calling for genuine change because they are hurting. Everywhere in America, people know, even if they themselves are all right, they know that most people aren't, that the future is insecure, that we have lost our economic leadership, that we are coming apart when we ought to be coming together. The message of the voters tonight is that we got to go beyond the plain old politics of the 80s, the politics of division and denial and destruction. The people in the South heard the worst about me, but they saw the best. They know. They know that the true measure of character in politics can never be perfection because if it were, no one could pass. The true measure, the true measure is genuine commitment that lasts day in and day out through failures and disappointment and defeat and setback. The true measure is rooted in the desire to do better and a belief that it is always possible to do better and that we are morally bound to do better. That has been the driving force of my life in and out of politics. I got in. I got into this race because I have labored for 11 years to improve the lives of the people in my state against all the odds and with no help from Washington because I thought most people in America were just like me and Hillary and our friends at home, that they were tired of a politics that puts money first and people last. <laughs> that they knew something our competitors also know, which is the only way to build an opportunity society today is to put people first, to put their interests, their capacities, and their futures first. And that is what this campaign stands for. Governor Clinton talking to his supporters in Chicago this I evening, the next great challenge for him, Illinois and Michigan. And now speaking of uh, other people and people in the campaign, people affected by it, let's go to Lowell, Massachusetts, where former Senator Paul Songus is standing by. Uh, Senator Songus, good evening. Thank good you evening, for taking dear. the time to join us. Where can Thank you stop you. Uh, Governor Clinton now and how? Well, we're going into Michigan and Illinois. Um, if you look at tonight's results, I came in second every place in the South. Uh, Bill was not able to do that in Massachusetts and in the neutral territory of Delaware, I've won. And the fact is, once you get out of our home regions, I have won, I think, six states and Bill has won one. So I think when we have neutral territory, uh, we do much better. 85% of the South is now behind us. So we're now moving into areas where the enormous advantage that Bill has had both financially and organizationally, and the endorsements by the Democratic apparatus will not be so effective. He said just a moment ago, the South has heard the worst about me and seen the best of me. Do you agree with that? Well, I guess it depends against whom. Um, the poll that uh, came out yesterday showed that I'm the strongest Democrat in the country against George Bush. And the fact is, if you look at who can appeal to independents and to Republicans, 
the fact is that I'm that candidate. So what I tried to do tonight in my speech was to reach out to Democrats and ask the very simple question, do you want to win in November? And if that, the answer is yes, then I think they'll gravitate towards the message that we are bringing home. In fairness, you only had, what, a point and a half, two points on Governor Clinton against Mr. Bush in the ABC poll yesterday? Yes, Peter, but if you look at the, the, the vast differences in money, the fact is the bill has raised about three times as much money as I have, managed to get on the front page of Time magazine, which I've not been able to do, and has all the political endorsements from governors and senators, and yet despite that, and despite my candidacy being written off early, the fact is we're now in a position where we can say legitimately, A, that I do better against George Bush, and secondly, when you get into neutral territory, that I can carry my message outside of the Northeast, and the fact is other than a caucus in Idaho, he's not been able to do that. So I think you have to have a capacity to go into the independent ranks and to moderate Republicans and bring those people into the Democratic camp if David. you're going to beat Judge Bush in November. David Brinkley. Governor Clinton said in his little talk there a minute ago, that the American people are tired of hearing politicians make promises which are never delivered. And uh, the question that seems never to be answered is you're going to produce all these wonderful benefits. The question is how? And we don't hear that answered much. Are you aware of that? Well, we, what we're talking about here is economics. Right. And let's look at what happened in the South. That seven newspapers, seven major newspapers in Florida endorsed my candidacy and virtually all of them were on my economics. I also was endorsed by the Atlanta Constitution, the Knoxville paper, the Tennessean in Nashville, in San Antonio, in Corpus Christi, in Fort Worth. Now, I'm a stranger to that part of the country, but when the message gets out, then I think we have a capacity to convince people, and I think my economic plan, when viewed by newspapers and Bill's own turf, they have endorsed me and not him, and I think that has a capacity to grow as these months go on. Senator Songus, I'd like to ask you a question, if I may, about mm -hmm. the campaign. Um, it's getting increasingly tense between the two of you. You said you were forced to go negative. Any evidence to you that it's worked? Well, obviously, the, the negative against me has worked. Um, I mean, How about the negative you used yourself? Well, the fact is, you know, we just don't have the same amount of money. And so if someone is throwing negative advertising against me, and that's all that people are absorbing, and that message is a distortion, that's going to take hold. And now, as we get further into this race and the financial equation begins to even out a bit, then I think we can get our message out, the positive message, and respond if we have to. But maybe, when you're if you out maybe if you take the pledge not to produce any more negative advertising, you can convince him to do the same? I've been taking that pledge, as you know, for two weeks. And the fact is, they don't want to stop. But, you also, started... but you're also producing negative advertising, right? Uh, Peter, I'm getting hit. If I cannot convince people that I can respond, not only forget Bill Clinton, but every leader around the world is going to look at me and make judgments about what they could do to me as president. So I have no choice. But I have, from the Denver debate, said I will stop if they stop. They started this thing, and I've pledged to stop. And they never accept that pledge because they want to continue. Senator Songus, I don't think it's good for the Democratic Party. Excuse me for interrupting. Thank you for taking the time to join us. Senator Paul Songus, who won tonight in his home state of Massachusetts and also in Rhode Island, and comes in second to Bill Clinton this evening everywhere else. We'll talk to Jerry Brown up in Michigan when we come back. This ABC News special. The 92 vote. The Super Tuesday primaries. Brought to you tonight by Chrysler Corporation and its divisions. Proud sponsors of the 1992 Olympic team. ABC News coverage of the 92 vote will continue in a moment. This is ABC News continuing coverage of the Super Tuesday primaries. Here again, David Brinkley and Peter Jennings. Former Governor Jerry Brown is in uh, Remulus, beg your pardon, Romulus, Romulus, Michigan this evening. It's Remus and Romulus, which... Uh... That was the other wolf that founded Rome. <laughs> yes, thank you, David. <laughs> and right, whatever the case, we're having some difficulty making a technical connection to Romulus in Michigan. No, uh, no offense intended. Um, so we'll talk to Governor Brown as soon as we can link up. We'll talk among ourselves for just a few minutes, if we may. Our political director, Hal Bruno, is with us here in New York. Uh, no one in our organization follows all this more closely. Hal, what do you think at this point about the nomination jump way ahead on both the Democratic and the Republican side. 
Well, first of all, on the Republican side, President Bush is more than halfway to the 1,105 delegates he needs for the nomination. So I think by uh, the end of April, early May, he's going to have that nomination locked up with all of his delegates. On the Democratic side, uh, Bill Clinton certainly is running in the front of the pack, or what's left of the pack, for the nomination. He's going to be very difficult to stop after Illinois and Michigan. Uh, Paul Sangas has to really stop him in one of those places next week. Paul Sangas complains tonight about machine and money. Well, he's, he's got a legitimate complaint. Bill Clinton's got those things, and Paul Sangas doesn't have them. And nowhere do they count more than in a state like Illinois. Uh, Clinton has worked it for many months. He has plenty of organization already in place there. He has party leadership working with him there. Paul Sangas is going to have a tough time stopping him there. Uh, but that's where it has to begin to happen. Otherwise, that delegate count is, that delegate count is simply going to build up. And joining us from our Los Angeles Bureau this evening is uh, one of the architects or one of the principal campaign organizers of Governor Dukakis's uh, campaign uh, four years ago, Susan Estridge. Nice to see you again, ma'am. Nice to see you. Taking a look at the South today and looking on from here a bit, what do you think? How much trouble is Songus in because he doesn't appear to have the same operation as Clinton? Well, I think Hal's absolutely right. If there are two states where an organization helps you, where money helps you, where organized labor can help you, it's Illinois and Michigan. And so Clinton has real advantages. But I think the real challenge for Clinton goes beyond his organizational advantages is whether he can use this window when we're focused on him, when lots of people who haven't voted are focused on him, to really define himself. He's been barraged these last few weeks. And now it seems to me it's a chance to go beyond his organization and beyond his money and, and really get back to his message and define himself. You're an experienced campaign operator. What advice would you offer? To Clinton or to Sanga? Well, either one. Who pays yeah. more? Yeah, who pays better? <laughs> I think Clinton's got the money right now. I think the challenge <laughs> That doesn't mean Clinton, he pays more. No, it doesn't, does it? Anyway, the challenge. Yeah. The challenge for Clinton is obviously he's got the, the organization on the ground, he's got the endorsements, he's going to have a lot of support from elected officials. I really think the challenge for him is now that he's got a window, and you don't get too many windows in politics, it's a chance to go at the character issue, not in personal terms, but in public terms, to get back to his message, to start talking about the future and about economic issues that matter to people. Looking you back, him, oh, sorry, you, you make him sound unbeatable. You think well, he is? I don't, I, in the Democratic process, I think it's going to be very tough. I think Paul Songus is going to face an uphill battle. Bill Clinton's going to have a lot of momentum tomorrow morning going into Illinois and Michigan. He's done his homework, and I agree with Hal. If Songus can't stop him in Illinois and Michigan, he's going to wake up next Wednesday morning, and a lot of people are going to say, so when are you going to stop him? In seeing, the tri in seeing the results of Super Tuesday today, are we seeing the triumph of an organization? And help us, what do you mean by organization? Well, I think we're seeing a couple of things. First of all, Super Tuesday worked in the way it was supposed to. It didn't work, if you recall, in 1988, when Michael Dukakis had a great Super Tuesday, which was not what was supposed to happen. But it worked today for Bill Clinton. It, it put a Southerner not over the top, but gave him plenty of momentum. And I think he had a number of things going for him organizationally. And by that, I mean he had offices. He was known. He had people on the ground. He had an organization of people and supporters in place across the South. But even more, I think he had a better message than Songus for Democratic primary voters, at least. Okay, thank you very much, Susan Estridge, for taking the time to talk to us. In one of the states today, I'm embarrassed to say I've forgotten which one, Songus didn't even have a campaign office. Oklahoma, Oklahoma. as I recall now. We're going to come yeah, back in just a moment now. Somebody, somebody mixed it up. No, I think that was not getting him on the ballot, right. right? And in a number of places, he didn't even have an organizational office, which makes it very difficult if you're trying to uh, keep even the like momentum rolling. We'll come back in just a minute and talk to former Governor Jerry Brown, with whom we've now made contact in Michigan. We'll be right back. ABC News coverage of the Super Tuesday primaries will continue after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. New special. Coverage of the 92 vote and the Super Tuesday primaries continues. Once again, David Brinkley and Peter Jennings. Just so that I get my facts straight, it was in Oklahoma, where he didn't get on the ballot. Somebody neglected somehow to sign some paper. An aide, yes. It was in Louisiana where he actually didn't manage even to get a campaign office open. We're talking about Paul Songus, just to get the facts right. We said we we're going to talk to Jerry Brown, who's up in Michigan. Before we do, let's check in briefly with ABC's Lynn Scher, who can tell us by looking at the exit polls, some of what the voters had to say about former Governor Brown today. Lynn? 
Well, Peter, when you look at Massachusetts, which is a state where he did uh, fairly well tonight, Jerry Brown is doing well among those who we keep calling the disaffected voters, uh, those who are not happy with, uh, uh, don't, don't feel connected to what the government is doing. He came in second among those who said environment was an important issue. He came in second in Massachusetts among those who said poverty and homelessness was an important issue. He held his own among those with some college education and among those who said they were angry uh, at the way the federal government is being run. In Rhode Island, where he got an even larger percentage of the vote, he also came in second on those who thought environment, poverty, and taxes were the big issues. But let's take a look at this board. This is an area where Jerry Brown actually won over his two opponents. In Rhode Island, people who said, I voted for the candidate because he cares about people like me, of them, 34% went for Jerry Brown. So this is a group he actually won. Peter? Okay, Lynn, thanks very much. Governor Brown, former Governor Brown, is at Romulus in southeast Michigan tonight at the United Auto Workers headquarters up there. Governor Brown, thank you for, for joining us. Um, you, can't, you can't have the nomination uh, of the party, so what's your mission here? What do you mean I can't have it? I don't think Bill Clinton or Songus can have it. I've got a record. I've been governor of the biggest state. We've created 2.2 million jobs, and I've got the only new political idea in this whole campaign. And that's the flat tax of 13% and wiping out the entire obscene mess of the 4,000 pages of the federal tax code. That notwithstanding, now that's a program. Sir, that notwithstanding, sir, you know as well as I think anybody, from a straight-out political point of view, you're not going to get the nomination. So what's the mission? I will tell you that I have a better chance than my two opponents. Both of them are fatally flawed. They don't represent the majority of who the Democratic Party is. Okay, well, I we, do. That's we, my background. It's hard to get the message out, but as we do, the crowds are going now from the hundreds to the thousands. It's an uphill battle.